What's good people, I'm Simeon Panda and welcome to my channel. Guys, it's come to my attention that when I show you guys like my videos, I, I always give you exercises you can try, um, methods you can try, but I never show you the full workout, you know? And even if I do show you the full workout, sometimes I forget to give you the uh, sets, the reps, uh, and just talk through the whole session. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Today I'm gonna do chest and back, and I'm actually gonna talk through the whole thing in terms of letting you know why I'm doing what I'm doing, including my warm up, um, any little bits and pieces and tricks that I use or any methods, I'm gonna explain everything in this session. So you can take this session and you can follow it, you can follow the methods, you can follow the warm up, everything, and uh, get it done. So uh, let's get started. So those of you that are familiar with my videos will know I always start off with the bar, always. Regardless of the exercise, I wanna get the movement pattern that I'm about to use, I wanna get my joints lubricated, and I genuinely just wanna get warm without any weight. And um, I always use the bar, you know? So typically, you, you, you might see someone jump on, they put one plate or two plate on, and they go almost to their working weight straight away. I truly believe that the reason why I was able to train for so long without injuries, it's like 21 years now, is because of this method of warming up correctly um, and not going straight into my heaviest weight. Um, I was guilty of it back in the day when I was young and supple, but yeah, now um, in my later years, I, I always warm up. So, and another thing you saw is I always put the clips on. Now, with benching, if a lot of people say that, you know, don't put the clips on if you're benching on your own. That way, should the worst happen, you can tip it and get the bar off. I mean, I'm in a gym full of people, that's not gonna happen. So I always put the clips on because you don't want that imbalance. I've often seen people benching and just the plate moving a slight inch or two to the side is gonna put you off balance. And I want everything as neat and as uh, correct as possible. So the way I apply my rep range in my bench pressing strategy is different to how I apply it to most other exercises. And that's typically because when I'm doing bench press, I wanna go, well, for me, as heavy as possible. And to do that, I need to warm up, but not get too, not exert too much um, effort on the way up there to the maximum weight that I'm about to use. So with that, you saw that we started off with one plate for 10. We then did two plate for five, uh, three plate for three. I'm now gonna do just two reps on, uh, three and a half plates. And then we are gonna go for four, which would typically be a top set, uh, depending on if I'm having a great day or not. If I'm having a good day, we're gonna go, you know, 410, 415, 425. But um, yeah, it's four plates would typically be the, the, the top set. And when we get to that set, depending on how it goes, we repeat it for a few sets. So um, yeah, that's what we're gonna about to do. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so uh, today's a okay day because uh, that went up pretty smooth. So um, off the back of that, I'll probably keep that weight for the next set and um, the next set after that again. So um, like I said, my, my bench press um, routine is a little different. So like I said, the, my, main, my, my main goal is to squeeze out these reps. That is my, my, my main focus whenever I do chest. Now, for you guys, if your concern is building muscle, which is a concern of all of ours, but if that's your main concern and not necessarily um, really improving your strength, then I wouldn't necessarily say to follow this technique. You're gonna wanna do more reps at a weight that is challenging. So for me, that would probably be three and a half. So three and a half, if I, do, I was to do several sets of three and a half plates, you know, trying to get like maybe fives if possible, that's really gonna be the weight for me that would, would increase my mass. This, I'm not gonna get big off doing one rep maxes and two rep heavy sets, but me, when I train, that is what I go for. I want strength as well as size. I've been training 21 years, I built the size, so my concern is like now strength, you know? Um, generally, I don't really have a desire to get bigger. Um, I do want to improve my look, but I don't have a desire to necessarily get bigger, but I do want to, to be strong. So anything I do is with that in mind. I don't train like a power lifter, with that being said, I still train like a bodybuilder, but trying to be strong. 
Okay guys, so this is gonna be my last set. And normally on my last set, um, I'm either gonna do pause reps or I'm just gonna rep out. I've had this little PR that I wanna try and do of getting 15 reps with three plates. I've got close to it. I think the closest I've come is 14. I think I'm feeling all right today. We'll see how I do. Thank you, appreciate it. Only 12 today, man. But um, that's a goal that I'm gonna hit soon and I'll post about it. But I really wanna go for that 15. Um, as I said, I've been trying it for a long time, but the mistake I make when I do it is I always do it as my last set. because so it's not a serious goal of mine. It's just something that's fun that I like to try. One day I'm gonna come in, warm up and go straight for it and see if I've got the 15. But until then, we're gonna be stuck with 12s, 13s and 14s, but not the 15. Moving on. So when you see me do that, I'm not actually warming up there, but I am just mimicking the movement because although I'm already warm, what I'm actually doing is just making sure I'm ready to do the movement pattern. Seems a bit trivial, but for me, I just need to know every exercise that I do, I need to make sure that I'm doing it in the correct manner. And the best way to do that is to do it without weight, find a movement pattern that I want. Even though it's, it's, it's a set pattern, you just need to feel it out, you know? So normally, when doing just chest day, I would do um, a similar amount of sets on incline as I would do on flat. So that could be another eight sets. But because we're doing back today as well, we're gonna limit the sets. So. Although we want the biggest compound lift, which is the bench press, eight sets, the next exercise, probably just gonna do four sets, and then we're gonna do some flies, and then we're gonna move on to back. So it's all about time management, making sure we get everything in and work everything effectively. But like I said, if I was doing just chest, it probably would be six to eight sets on incline, just, as, 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 just like we did on the flat bench. How you doing? What's up, man? How you doing, man? Good to see you, man. my man. Appreciate I'm you, man. Fan, Appreciate buddy. you, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> of course, wicked. Wicked. Hey, hey. Okay guys, what we've done, we started off with a compound movement for chest, as, as you always should. Any freaking muscle group you start with should be a compound movement. So that means if you're doing the shoulders, it's gonna be an overhead press. If you're doing um, legs, it's gonna be like your squat. Uh, just compound movements to start your, your, your uh, muscle group off with. And then we moved on, we've done incline. Also wanna hit the upper chest. Obviously the uh, flat bench is one of the best exercises to hit the whole chest. And then we wanna hit the upper chest. And then we wanna make sure that we can get that cleavage so uh, we went for our flies to finish. Normally on a typical chest day, as I said, I'd probably do more sets. I would then also do a variation of flies. So what I did was I did just one set of flies coming just below my chest. But what I would do on a typical chest day is I would do them at shoulder width and I would also do them flies coming upwards for the upper chest. Um, I'll do just a variation of flies. So um, we've pretty much covered chest. We're gonna move on to back now. And again, we want a big compound movement using um, the whole back. So what we're gonna start off with is this exercise, this machine here, which is very similar to a T-bar roll. So it's exactly the same movement pattern, drawing up from below, squeezing your uh, lats to the middle, 
to the center. And um, yeah, it's another great exercise to, to start off the back with. So if you don't have this machine, you can use a T-bar row. But if you don't have this machine, you should definitely ask your gym to get it. <laughs> it's awesome. Again, no weight. Not because I'm trying to warm up, I'm warm. But although I like, you do use your back muscles when you're doing chest. But what I'm doing again is just knowing what movement I'm about to do before I start putting the weight on. So there's no set rep range with that. It's literally just feeling it out. Typically when you want to go heavy on certain exercises that, that offer you that unilateral um, variety, you should use it because um, often when you split it and do single arm, you can actually go heavier and really concentrate on working that muscle, which is what I'm about to do now. So if I was to try and do this set um, without you know, doing it single arm, I could do it and um, the form would be okay, but I just know that if I do it unilaterally, the form's going to be a lot better. I can concentrate on each rep and really squeeze. So that's what I'm about to do. Okay, so next exercise is a lat pull down, but I'm not gonna do it in a normal fashion. I'm gonna do it single. I love this movement and I can't implore you enough to try this exercise out. When you do it correctly, it feels amazing. So I want you guys to try it. Great for the lats. Um, you're gonna see, obviously I'm gonna take this off. You're gonna see my back work and you're gonna see the lats squeeze on each rep. And it's an exercise I'd love for you guys to try, so. thing you're gonna see with my exercises is that once I've done the heavy sets there has to be at least one set where I come back down in weight and rep out you know um, as I said mostly my, 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 my sessions tend to lean towards strength so um, heavy sets heavy weight something I've done over the over the years because I, I want to be strong as well as build muscle you know so um, but then I will finish off with a high rep set, you know, so it's a common thing that you'll see. I'll cut the video off there, chest and back complete. However, I've realized I'll be doing you a disservice if I do that, because I'm actually not done at all. Um, so I've done chest and back, but what I always do after almost every session that I don't show you guys is calves. And you guys are always like, oh, Simeon, how did you build up your calves? Because my calves used to be non-existent. And it's because I do them after 
almost every session. I just tend not to show it because if I'm doing a video about chest and then I throw in some calves at the end, I just normally feel like I should just give you the, the what's in the title and that's chest. So today I'm actually gonna show you what happens after, you know, I might, after my session of chest and back or after shoulders, etc. So I'm gonna go do calves now and then I'm also gonna do cardio and I'll bring you that. I'm gonna show you guys that because that is the actual complete session, not just what you see in the video. So let's go. guys there you have it so chest and back and I finished off with a little calves that's how we build the muscle so how do we stay shredded cardio and diet can't bring you diet in the gym but I am going to show you what I'll go and do for cardio now typically I'll either jump on the treadmill or jump on the bike and it's a steady state cardio probably half an hour if I've got time an hour so you've seen how I build the muscle and then that's how I stay lean it's cardio guys don't be afraid of cardio uh, find a cardio movement that you enjoy or that you can tolerate you know and then try and keep consistent with it that's going to help you get lean because at the end of the day if you build all this muscle if you're not defined you're not going to see it definition also brings you enthusiasm because you're then going to be looking in the mirror and seeing what you're working you know so you imagine you've trained your abs all this time and you don't see them when you finally see them you're like that's what i want you know and then you can start to you know tweak your diet make sure that your cardio is in there so that you can see it even more and um, just see what you're working with you know as you as you guys saw I took off my vest today and you see the muscles moving and uh, that motivates me to do more you know so uh, yeah hope you guys enjoyed that I'm gonna go finish off with my cardio now peace out subscribe